Well, the nearly three-month-long unrest in Manipur has shattered dreams and lives of not just the common people, but even sportsmen heroes who have found themselves at the receiving end of things. Footballer Chinglen Sana Singh or Sana, who plays for India and Indian Super League club Hyderabad FC, still remembers that fateful night of May 3rd when he received a call from his mother back home in Churachandpur. Sana, who was on Hyderabad FC duty at that time playing in Kerala, was worried at the sight of multiple missed calls. When he called back home after the match, the India centre back back heard his mother crying as the sound of gunshots echoed. So worried was Sana that he stayed up the whole night talking to his mother, fearing for the safety of his family. While well, fortunately, his family was rescued by the army the very next day. His house was burnt to ashes and even a football turf he had installed for neighborhood kids was also destroyed. Sana rushed back home days later, depriving himself of the India birth for two crucial Tonys. Speaking exclusively to Northeast Live, Sana narrated the ordeal that forced him to put his football career on hold for the time being. Listen in. On the 3rd of May, I was playing a match in uh, Kerala, as I remember. Uh, my mom called and a lot of uh, people from the family called, my brother, my sister. And I was surprised, like, what might have happened. Uh, so when I called back after the match got over, I got my phone, I called back. And I was really worried what happened. And then I heard my mom crying over the phone. She was saying that uh, there were burning houses, there were gunshots, there were attacks, and which I was really worried and scared. I thought maybe I would lose all of them. I'm talking to them for the last time. I don't know how to express that feeling. It was really scary because I, as I said, I thought I would lose all of them and I was speaking to them for the last time. And I told my mom, please do not hang up the call. Please be on the line. Yeah, that's how uh, it happened on the third night. And I was to fly on the fourth uh, back to Hyderabad after we played the match. And I stayed the entire night awake and was speaking to my mom over the phone. And... Fortunately, they escaped uh, the, the Indian Army. They evacuated them from Churchanpur. Uh, they provided trucks, uh, buses, and jeeps uh, to evacuate them from there. And then that's how they went to the relief camp in Moirang. And then from there on, then I heard the news of uh, our house being destroyed, burned, and being torched. And then after a few hours, again, the football turf that I built uh, in the locality in Churchanpur, Pibong, uh, it's being burned, destroyed as well. So I got this information and uh, it was really heartbreaking and sad because I had a big dream of, uh, you know, providing a platform to the youngsters coming up in Churchanpur. They were really talented, but they couldn't afford a football school. So my dream, my plan was to provide them a platform where they can become a professional player and then they can go on and uh, uh, play for the national team and then become a great player for the country and help their family as well uh, because as you know now football uh, once they become a professional they can help their family and people around them their life changes so that was my plan but then this incident happened and everything got destroyed and everything being robbed taken away uh, fortunately I, I would say my parents my family everyone escaped alive and that's I would you know it's God's plan, I would say, that they're alive and I'm happy about that. But everything that we ever earned and ever had is being all taken away. Now we have to, again, uh, as a family, regroup, build the strength and then restart again. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, what's at the moment. And what's unfortunate is we still have no clue when we can return back home. Well, there is no home. That's what I heard. Uh, uh, from a few friends that I have back there in uh, Churchanpur, they told me that uh, our house is being destroyed, broken down, and uh, so has the football club as well. And so there is no place called home for me to go back. It's getting tougher each day, so I hope the solution is uh, there. You know, the concerned people uh, who are to look after us and to protect us and to give us the shelter and for us to build our future on, uh, to decide. And so we can't plan anything at the moment. And it's really sad.
to see uh, my family suffering. That's one of the reasons I couldn't go uh, play for the national team on the 15th of May. I was called uh, for the national team to represent the country, which I couldn't go because the, given the situation uh, back home was very difficult for me uh, to not be able to be part of the team because playing for the country is the highest honor and it's everyone's dream, so, am, so is mine. But my decision to not go was never easy. But as we all understand that family in our life is the most important thing. So I had to be with them in the difficult moments and the most difficult times of our lives. Uh, because our house were burned, they didn't have any place to live in. And they were morally down, they were crying, they were depressed. I had to be there uh, for them as a strength, as a support. And so that was my decision to not be able to be part of the Indian team, which uh, won all the, both the tournaments with great performances from my teammates, uh, which I missed out on in my career, you know. Uh, in a footballer's life, uh, playing for a country, it doesn't come every, every now and then. So missing out on such tournaments and such matches, we hardly play uh, around 10 matches a season, a, a year. Uh, for the national team. So I have missed out on those uh, eight to 10 matches, which is really sad, but given the situation, I think anyone would choose the, to be with the family, given the hardship, given the, uh, the worst scenario that my family faced and everyone in Manipur, in Churchanpur faced. So that was my decision to be with my family. From Manipur, I think seven, eight of us were selected, from which I couldn't turn up because uh, I am from Churchanpur where we, the Maite, are the minorities there. So I'm the only one from there. So I couldn't go for the camp because the reason that my house and everything was torched and burned and my family was staying in a relief camp, I couldn't go. A lot of, uh, a lot of kids come train and I provide them uh, training in the morning, uh, free of course, of course. And then uh, in the evening, uh, there are bookings, they come to play and things like that. My plan was to have an established football school for which I was building up a gym spa and you know for ice and hot therapy as well so i was trying to do things uh what a professional player gets so that they are trained well in the gym they are trained well in the ground and then they have a good recovery session as well so that was my plan that was my dream which i won't give up on i will again hopefully restart again and try to build elsewhere that's my dream and i won't give up on that but for now uh it's very difficult to plan because as i said uh there is no certainty where when we can go back and restart again. I'm staying at my friend's place, Salam Ranjan, my fellow match, who is also a professional player, right now playing for Gokulam Kerala. He helped me while I was finding a rent in Manipur where my family of uh, 12, 13 people could stay together. It's very difficult to find a house as such. Uh, so luckily he built a new house and uh, his previous house that they were living in was uh, vacant. So my family shifted there and we're living there all together. And coming to the point where my playing career, uh, at the moment I'm playing with Hyderabad FC uh, in the Indian Super League. And uh, for the national team, which I missed out on, I will work hard again and to be part of the team, which it's uh, my aim to work hard and perform well at my club to be again uh, selected for the Indian team. It was very difficult for me, myself, to speak to the coach about my, me not being able to attend the camp but he understood the situation perfectly, which I'm really thankful to him. And also Saji sir, the general secretary of AIFF for allowing me and understanding me, uh, my situation and for being so supportive and giving me, uh, you know, words of encouragement and support during this difficult time. And the coach said to me, and uh, even Saji sir said to me, uh, that your family is the most important thing in our lives and you have to be there for them. And make sure you are safe and the family is safe and then whenever you're ready and you again come back to the national team and fight for your place so those words were very welcoming to me in in a hard situation and hard times so i would like to thank them as well for being so supportive and understanding we are still stranded uh, in many places around uh, manipur in relief camps and life is really hard i can imagine uh, people uh, from various situations uh, it's very difficult on a day-to-day -day life we need a solution and we need to restart our life. And for that, the government should first assure our safety to go back uh, to the places that we belong. And for that, 
whatever strategic plan the government has, please implement and please uh, provide uh, people their safety and make sure that they can go back home safely once we call home, which we can again build and live there.